you Ramanujan by chance? Oh, <laughs> don't be intimidated. Great knowledge comes from the humblest of origins. I'm here to publish. The letter only contained a small sampling of my discoveries. This will take a lifetime. Maybe two. Hey, I'm Christopher John Farley, a senior editor with The Wall Street Journal. I'm here today with the director and the cast of the new movie, The Man Who Knew Infinity. You've got director Matthew Brown, star Dev Patel, and star Jeremy Irons. Thanks for coming to The Wall Street Journal. Appreciate it. Thank Pleasure you. to see you. So, Dev, you play the mathematical genius Ramanujan in this new movie, The Man Who Knew Infinity. How did you first hear about his story? It really threw the script. Um, and then whilst I was reading it, um, this kind of light bulb went off in my head, and I remembered the scene in Good Will Hunting where uh, Robin Williams is sitting at the bar talking about this genius that held from obscurity in India and, you know, kind of conquered the mathematical world. Uh, you play G.H. Hardy, the mathematician who sort of aids Ramanujan in his quest to come to England and get his work published. What did you know about G.H. Hardy before you took this part, and did you do any research afterwards? I knew nothing about it before, okay. I, before I took the part, and I did as much research as I could afterwards, yeah. He's a fascinating guy because he wrote that book, A Mathematician's Apology. Which, that, that was the real entry into, into Hardy, because for me, mathematics is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> and when I read The Mathematician's Apology, um, which is a sort of composite of his, some of his lectures, uh, I realized that, that I shared with him my passion for literature and drama and art, and that pure mathematics has just that color and romance. And I, so I, I understood what made him tick, this very dry academic who inside lived this very colorful life of pure maths. And of course, Matthew, you directed the film, and there have been a number of films in recent years that sort of explore the lives of great geniuses, uh, 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 films like A Theory of Everything. Uh, what about, you know, the life of the mind uh, is so interesting to, to, to audiences, and how do you make it cinematic? Well, I think it's, it's the human story at, at the center of all of these films that drives it, and, and this story sort of what Jeremy was just saying about the fact that these were artists, as pure mathematicians, as artists, is something that was new for us, and I, I, I became very intrigued by that. Okay, and, and Dev, why should we care about Ramanujan? What about his particular um, branch of mathematics, his discoveries, makes him someone that we should care about, you know, years after his death? I think he um, really revolutionized the, the world of mathematics, and there's a little bit, I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to say, at the end of the film about how they're using his theories now to quantize black holes, whatever that means. But um, uh, it's very complex And for stuff. the string theory. The string theory. That's right. That's we all <laughs> understand We're going to throw theory. all these... Um, yeah. One of the things that's very special about the story is the idea of an outlier and the idea that talent can be found really anywhere and it needs to be nurtured. And one thing I find interesting is that you know, a lot of times when, when uh, Western filmmakers do films that center around Indian protagonists. Oftentimes, the Indian protagonist is put to the side, and there's some other figure who sort of discovers him, yeah. and they become the, the hero of somebody else's story. Mm. This film doesn't do that. Uh, was that important to you? And tell me a bit about your feelings about the way this film sort of developed your character. Yeah. Well, I didn't really have a say in it, you know, uh, but it was obviously the most enticing part of joining the project was to play a, a man of such nobility and, and uh, you know, walk in the shoes and, uh, you know, this true life legend. And uh, I, I guess um, in terms of, uh, in general, I mean, I think it's, uh, I, I hope I'm not too bold in saying that I feel like I'm treading new ground in a way. You know, in terms of the, you know, African-American struggle in cinema, you got all these beacons of, you know, you know, these legends like Sidney Poitier or Denzel Washington or Will Smith, but, you know, in terms of you know, in terms of Indian characters, there's not really much out there to compare to, in in Western cinema. So, this film, if you look at it by the numbers and you you see that it's a film about mathematics, you know, there's no real CGI or action or anything. It's a, it's a, two men. I mean, it's a, a lot more than mathematics, but it's a difficult difficult sell on paper. 
So the real triumph is that we're here and getting these great responses and opening all these festivals and things like that. So. Well, you mentioned that, the difficult sell part. And Matthew, I want to ask you about that. I mean, this is a film at its core that is about mathematics. It's also about this human story, <laughs> about this guy who comes to England and triumphs. Mm. But how do you sell that to the public, the fact that it's about mathematics? Will that scare people away? Who are... It's not about mathematics. You don't think it is? No, of course. What's it about then? It's about human relationships, about what every great story is about at the base. It's about the interaction mm. between different characters and and drawing the audience through in through that that's what this is about the mathematics is the wallpaper that's <laughs> that, that's you know what's going on behind and and in their heads but uh, mm. it's not what the film's about and what did you learn about Ramanujan that you didn't know before doing your research for this film but um, playing him in in this part I think the the biggest thing I I, I think I, I came to respect mathematics as an art form like I, I was very intimidated by it. My father's an accountant and I have I suffer from mathematical induced brain freeze. Like I I'm so terrible with numbers, <laughs> I can't even figure out tips on bills, you know? Um, and so well, to to walk in his shoes and understand that this man was an abstract mathematician and his his life, his faith, his religion affected the way he thought and how it changed his art. Um, what was really inspiring to me and it kind of made it more palatable and less you know, uh, scary, more approachable a subject, if that makes sense. Yeah, and one of the themes of this film really is atheism versus faith. Yeah. And you played G.H. Hardy, who, is, who was an atheist and, you know, talked about it and informed the way he sort of viewed the world. In real life, of course, you're not an atheist. Playing this part, did it um, give you any more empathy for the other point of view or for another point of view? No, I, I mean, that's what, what I, I have empathy for all sorts of points of view. So I'm an actor. I mean, I, you know, or, or, or one of the things is you play, you play different people with different beliefs. Um, Hardy, for him, he, he said, I don't believe in something that I can't prove. So that's why he was an atheist. But on the other hand, he didn't know how the hell this man, Ramanujan, uh, got his, his theories. So. And he, uh, so he knew there was something other. I mean, he was, I, th I think he wavered as a result of his relationship with Ramanujan. Going back to your question earlier, when you said, you know, how is it that you've got a European him film here and the, the Indian character is not pushed to the side, um, I just remind you uh, of the fate of European actors in Bollywood. Um, <laughs> we don't have much traction out there. <laughs> What do you hope people take away from this film? I mean, what, that's, if they go to see it, what do you hope they come away from the theater thinking about? I hope, I hope it's an inspiring film that opens people's hearts. I mean, it's what we're talking about is it being, it's a really, it's a human story at its core. And, and any, any film has to be, have conflict and have drama, and this really does. You have a man who has, yeah, an equation has no meaning unless it expresses a thought of God. He's given up everything to try to be understood and goes on this incredible mission and he finds the one person in the world who will take him in and yet he's completely emotionally closed off and it's how these two people come together. And I think in being open that way, maybe a bigger message is that if we're open, we can be open to other outliers out there because there's probably a lot of other Ramanujans in the world that could be discovered, but we have to have an open mind to do it. Mm -hmm. so. and, and Jeremy, you, you were also recently in Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice, you played Alfred in that movie. I've read that Ben Affleck has written a whole new Batman script. Do you know anything about that? Uh, what more can we see about Alfred in the future in the whole... If I told you anything, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Even you got too old to die young, not for lack of trying. Uh, I don't know, but I, I, I'm looking forward to... I haven't read Ben's script yet. I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, I'll just go back to, 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 to The Man Who Knew Infinity. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's very strange when a movie works and when it doesn't work. We showed it last night to a very disparate group of people, um, mathematicians, uh, politicians, artists, and um, there was a lot of weeping going on. <laughs> Amongst these sort of you know, hip New Yorkers, uh, so the movie has something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The movie has something. Um, I, it really seems to capture an audience, and uh, that's what I care about. Not that it's about it could be about space travel, baseball, I mean, uh, but it, but it actually something happens, um, which is I think Matt has done an extraordinary bit of work. Thank and you. also, Deb, when you were playing this part, was there any scene? that was particularly emotional for you? I know that there are a lot of emotional scenes in this movie, but is there one that struck you the most? Um, there was a, a lot of stuff I did in India, which kind of, in his hometown, 
mm. of Cumber Cone and we shot mm. in and it it kind of uh, you felt like you it felt so real and present there was a moment uh, when I was with Toby in the chapel that we shot in and we saw the plaque of Littlewood with Ramanujan underneath it too and it became so real that you know you know we're stepping in the shoes of real icons and legends but uh, you know sharing the space with this man every day um, was a real treat and uh, and, and, and shooting in Cambridge, because they'd yeah. never allowed a movie to shoot inside Cambridge um, University before. And a Trinity. A, 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 a Trinity. Yeah. Um, and it was a great honor to be allowed in. It's very beautiful uh, and extraordinary, because it was full of, you know, uh, uh, the dons, when they retire, they, they're allowed to live there. And so yeah. there's these ancient people with amazing <laughs> brains wandering about, men and women. Yeah. Um, uh, it was an extraordinary experience being there. Well, Jeremy Irons, Deb Patel, Matthew Brown, thanks for coming to the Wall Street Journal. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Pleasure talking.